Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to take a look at Greybeard. Greybeard, a total farmable champion inside campaign. Anybody can get this dude, but should you get this dude? Where does he even, where does he even drop? There we go. Uh, so Durham Forest, Greybeard. There you go. You just farm there long enough and boom, you'll get your hands on your very own Greybeard. Now he's a champion that we've had a look at here in the past on the channel and you know, kind of like, okay, he's he's obviously good. He's obviously a noteworthy rare champion. Definitely one of the best farmable champions inside the game. But does that justify, especially with power creep in this game, does it justify building this dude? Well, today I kind of wanted to answer that question on my free to play account, but I thought to myself, well, let me answer it on my main account first, where the resources are more plentiful, to say the least. Here we go. So I also wanted to find a, a you know a use for frostbite uh, set. Don't read too much into these artifact sets. Triple frost uh, frostbite giving me a forty five percent chance to block freeze debuffs. Also a what 10, 20, 30 percent chance at landing a freeze debuff on the attacker anytime he is attacked, which would be very good for against AOE champions. Good for progression. I don't think that frostbite artifact set is a game changer or specific. I just don't think it's worth, you know, going out of your way to farm a lot of this right now. But I figured we could have some fun with him in kind of a utility flex role inside the arena as a crowd control specialist because he also has freeze in his kit. So let's talk about his kit. First of all, his aura, really, really good for progression. Increase ally defense in dungeons by 30%. That's really, really good. The best rare champion in the game for that aura for dungeons. On his A1, attack one enemy and then has a 70% chance at placing a provoke debuff for one turn. Very, very high a chance at landing that provoke. And where that really comes into play is because of his A3. So skipping over his A2 for a second here, place a shield buff on this champion for two turns. Also has a 100% chance when booked of placing a counterattack buff on this champion for two turns value of the shield proportional to defense and it cannot be removed so that leads into two extra turns of him landing provokes again at a 70 percent chance thanks to the counterattack that he's putting on himself he's also a defense based champion uh despite what the uh, a1 has a1 damage is based on attack which is an interesting curveball and really an unfortunate one for this champion his a2 is actually based on defense this is a defense based champion you can see it right here so on his a2 an aoe attack has a 30 uh, make it a 40 percent chance when booked of placing a freeze debuff for one turn again damage inflicted proportional to defense so he's got an aoe freeze 40 percent chance on his a2 on a three turn cooldown he has the counterattack and shield, and then he goes into the high likelihood at landing a provoke on his A1, plus a really good defensive aura. Overall, his kit has nice synergy, except for the attack on the A1, and I think that it's it's definitely a noteworthy uh, 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 skill uh, kit, excuse me, and I think that he's worth building for progression, not just in the early, but also the mid game of Raid Shadow Legends. We're going to give you some examples of that in today's video. Uh, quickly on Masteries, always go with Masteries that makes sense for you, your account, your team. But I do want to pick out a few of my favorites here. I think that War Master makes a lot of sense to get a little bit of damage out of that A1 that, again, is based on attack. Uh, I went here with attack instead of uh, the normal deadly precision because I was already able to build him with 100% crit rate or 99% crit rate. So, again, guys, use the masteries that make sense for you. Don't blindly copy. Uh, also, Opportunist is a great mastery for this champion. Increases damage uh, on target gets by 12% who have stun, sleep, fear, true fear, or freeze. And again, especially with the frostbite set, I figured that would be a lot of nice synergy on opportunist. By the same token, deterrence has a 20% chance of counterattacking on top of his own, you know, counterattack abilities. And I picked up retribution, but deterrence. 20% chance to counterattack an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, fear, true fear, or freeze debuff on any ally. And retribution. 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill. So again, kind of a nice anti-freeze synergy going on uh, 
on this champion. And again, deterrence doesn't relate directly because it's when it's applied to an ally, but it does make him more effective in specifically Ice Golem, where he's really, really good for progression on Ice Golem. We're going to see that in just a moment. So those are the masteries I decided to go with. You can definitely build this champion on the support tree as well. I actually, as a matter of fact, I think building him on support would be a great choice for you guys who are looking for more accuracy to consistently land those freezes and those provokes. You can also, if you don't want the tier six war master, the two other options for you guys are one fearsome presence brings that freeze up from a 40 to a 45% chance on his A2 and pin uh, eagle eye for an extra 50 accuracy. Again, if you're looking for more accuracy to consistently land his debuffs, depending on where you're using him and what type of artifacts you guys have <clears throat> in terms of his overall build, like I said, 99% crit rate. You do want to get him up to hundred percent crit rate if possible. And then stacking some defense, adding a little attack is okay because of his A1. However, his base attack is really low at 936. So my priorities for him are accuracy, crit rate, defense, and then speed as well. He's generally a pretty slow champion at 92 base speed. So he's tough to build to be very fast. Generally, all provoked champions in the game are very slow champions as well inside the game. So there we go. That is Greybeard. Let's go ahead and try him out here, guys. So the first use that we want to talk about with this champion, we're here in, in Hard Doom Tower. We're not on normal, but we are on the first boss. So Magma Dragon, I think, is a great fit for a use case for this champion. We have a very free-to-play friendly team, with the exception of a couple Void Rares, I guess. But we do have Greybeard. He's in the lead, even though Dungeon Auras don't work in the uh, in Doom Tower. But I didn't have another Aura on this specific team that I'm showcasing here. It doesn't really matter. This team's going to be successful either way. Again, we have a lot of CC on this team between the stun of Scylla the Drakes and obviously the freeze and provoke of Longbeard. Uh, Longbeard, I wish he was Longbeard, Greybeard. Uh, it's going to be pretty consistent. You can see we didn't actually land any there. Again, a 35% chance, but it's okay. These kind of trash waves before the enemy bosses in Doom Tower tend to be on the easier side of things. So that's cool. We're going to see him in the arena and in Ice Golem as well in today's video, guys. So here he goes. He has that counterattack. What we're trying to do is land the provoke as soon as possible on the boss and that's exactly what we do here we want to keep this magma dragon provoked at all times that's why we have again retribution we have counterattack two out of every four turns built into his kit and then consistently keeping him provoked so he's always attacking and again the provoke landed again right so he's always attacking graybeard and he's not doing tons of damage one shotting all the other champions on your team who have hex so that's kind of how this team works and that's why I think he's more, I think the case to be made to building this champion is much more than it could have been made six months ago before Doom Tower inside this game. Because I think that the introduction of Magma Dragon, who is susceptible to provoke, provokes one of the best things you can do to this, uh, this boss. I think that gives him another huge use case. There's not a lot of champions in the game who basically can provoke every turn, uh, again, if you play things right. And we have also two revivers on this team. So if we lose Relic Tender or Soul the Drakes or anybody else, the other one's there to pick them up as well. And of course, Relic there for the heals. So you can see, guys, able to tank really, really well for this team. Uh, tremendous champion with the consistent uh, provokes on his A1. It's something that, you know, makes him unique enough to justify building, especially if you're working on Magma Dragon. And I should add to this, guys, the beautiful thing is, is it's much easier, as you guys already know, to invest in rare champions. If I'm going to invest in a champion only with the sole purpose to help me out in Doom Tower, you know, you better bet I'm looking at my uncommons and my rare champions first, because in terms of resources, just so much less intensive. In terms of his overall stats here, he puts out 330,000 uh, damage, which is basically in line with my other debuffer in War Maiden, who's a pretty heavy hitter when all said and done. So he out damages Reliquary and still the Drakes, and he also was second in line, or third, I guess, in line by a hair uh, to Coltar in terms of the overall damage output from this champion. Let's go ahead and show him off in the arena. Talk about some teams that actually, you know, make decent use cases for this champion. So, well, if we go against a team like this, right, uh, what we can do is use him in sort of a, a, a CC role against a team like this. So what I want to do is remove, um, I think I'm going to remove Stagnite 
I'm not going to go with the decreased defense. And instead, I'm going to put uh, Sky Touch Sham in there. Let's see how this team does. So check it out here. Here comes the Hegemon. We're unable to land the Frostbite on him because of the Frostbite set or freeze on him because of the Frostbite set. We do get a lockout on our Arbiter. Uh, however, again, now we have block debuffs on and Arbiter's no longer locked out. And now, see, the enemy team, as you guys can see, does have block debuffs. So really having him go in with anything other than his A3 at this point is kind of foolish. I would rather just kind of chill, sit back. I mean, I don't really want to deal with, uh, with Yannicka there. So let's actually... Let's just boost. Go in with our first nuke. We take down... <laughs> No one. We take down Hegemon at least, right? But it's okay. We have revive on death on all these champions. And check it out. I think at this point, it's game over, right? So he hasn't really done a lot in this battle, to be fair. But we're just going to go ahead and run through the, you know, the next few arena teams here and see what we can do. So this is his first attack with his freeze. So his AoE and not doing a ton of damage, but he did land the freeze notably there on Duchess. Again, there's no decreased defense on these champions, so don't read too much into the damage there. Uh, let's just go ahead and we have no choice but to target uh, Duchess here because of the Veil. Go in with the A1 of Skullcrown, and let's see how much damage he is doing on his... That sucked. See how much damage he can do on his A1 here? 14k, not too bad, but that pretty much seals the deal and ends off this arena battle. So, the what role is he in right now? He's putting out a little bit of damage, but more of a CC role. And it didn't really show there in that battle. Let's see if we can do better in the next one. All right, guys. So, sorry. I am two minutes into this match. I had a phone call and it stopped my recording for some reason in the background. But either way, this is a close one here, guys. Going to go in. We need a decreased defense champion on this team, unfortunately. Uh, so, what I want to do is I, I want to face a non Tormin Hegemon team. And instead... I want to kind of tackle it that way. I want to approach uh, him as kind of being a a CC champion with not a cleanser, but rather a debuffer in that role. So like a Madam Ceres or something, or a War Maiden, Stag Knight, whoever, right? Uh, it, it works out again here, but it took too long to really justify without a debuffer on the team. So let's go against this squad right here. So against a team like this here, guys, that doesn't have that Hegemon, that Tormund that you need the Cleanser on, you're way better off with a debuffer. So let's just go ahead and put Stagnite in here. And again, we kind of still have our Speed Booster, our Nuker, and our debuffer, along with Greybeard playing that Flex role uh, as a crowd control champion. So here we go. Get that boost. Get that decreased defense. It looks like the enemy team is going to cut me in line right now. I don't have uh, Skull Crown and Greybeard uh, uh, Speed Tuned. But again, finishes off Canderfawn, which is going to be a great help. We need to keep everybody alive here at the end of the day. We go in with a A2 on Arbiter, and here we go. It's our time to shine. So do you guys think we can kill either of these two Revivers on the enemy team? Let's try. Boom. And we do take down Arbiter, but we go next too. So we are able to take down Duchess as well. And this one moved along much faster. So again, not expecting a ton of damage out of your Greybeard, rather using him to freeze that interesting counterattack ability that he has on his kit as well. Let's go ahead and try out Ice Golem and show you how he does here. Really, really good team. I do have a recent Iron Brago and a recent uh, Fusion Champion on this team as well. And again, Reliquary Tender, same faces otherwise. Dark Elhane and Re uh, Reliquary and Greybeard obviously in the lead. This is where you can take advantage of that amazing dungeon aura on this dude. So again, landing a lot of stuns here. This is the ultimate CC team with Sill of the Drakes and Greybeard on the same squad. Landing a lot of provokes, a lot of freeze, and a lot of stuns. Question is, is are we going to get a lot of uh, provokes and freezes and stuns on this wave here? With all of the abilities being a couple turns away from cooldown. I like having an increased defense champion on the same team as your Greybeard. Uh, mainly because it helps him out, helps him deal more damage because uh, his damage is based on defense on that AoE attack. You're going to notice a, notice a huge difference between the amount of damage that you can get. It scales like on three plateaus, if you will. Just the, the raw damage, which is nothing great on his A2, his AoE attack. 
uh, with increased defense, we're getting, we're seeing, you know, 60% more damage, roughly speaking, uh, sheer raw damage on, you know, the second plateau. And the third plateau is with increased defense on Greybeard and then decreased defense and or weaken on your enemies. And that's where that damage actually does add up. The rest of his damage is ma mainly coming from his War Master proc, especially when we start talking about bosses. Now, keep in mind here, we have Dark Elhane and Greybeard, both who have, uh, because of the Frostbite artifact set, interesting kind of synergy, anti-freeze synergy. Uh, we also have, again, deterrence uh, mastery as well. So a lot of kind of uh, Greybeard specialization here set up for Ice Golem. You guys could do the same with your masteries as well. So again, here coming in with not a very hard hitting A1. At the end of the day, as we finish off this Ice Golem and thus the video as well, I'm going to ask you guys, how do you feel about Greybeard? Do you, are you with me that Magma Dragon actually gave a justification to build this champion? Certainly for a farmable free rare champion, he has a lot of potential and a lot of real world utility that you can take advantage of inside this game. On my free to play account, as I always tell you guys, because it's easy to justify in your head reasons to max out almost any champion in this game, but your resources are severely limited in this game. So on my free to play, would I max this champion? The answer is yes, but with a huge caveat. The huge caveat is I'm not maxing him out until I'm really ready to focus on Doom Tower progression. So I own this champion on my free to play, but right now, am I gonna build him just to tank for Ice Golem? I don't even have any Frostbite gear on my free to play. So am I gonna use him just to tank for Ice Golem, essentially? Not right now, I'm not, no. You don't even know. I'm gonna focus on other champions such as Bellower, who I also own, but I have not maxed out, have not put gear on. I'm gonna focus on other champions right now, and then when I'm ready for Doom Tower, I'm gonna see how my main group of champions do on Magma Dragon. If I need help at that point, if I'm struggling, if that's the, the area where I've, I've hit that roadblock on Doom Tower, then I definitely will invest in this champion. So he is a champion worth building for everybody in this game who is struggling with Magma Dragon or is struggling with progression on Ice Golem. That's somewhere where obviously I'm struggling because I haven't cleared level 20, soon to be level 25 on Ice Golem on my free to play. But does that justify just immediately dropping everything and building him? when I don't have a ton of resources anyway? Probably not is my opinion. So I'm interested in hearing your opinions as well on this champion. What do you think? Have you built out a Greybeard? If so, do you use him? Do you like his kit as much as I do? Do you use him? Does anybody use him in the arena? Now that I showed him in the arena, I'm thinking, yeah, could probably do better in that role, to be totally honest with you guys. But I did want to give him full uh, a full spotlight here in the areas where I see the most immediate use. You can use him in a similar way that we're using him here on this team against Dragon. Just remember that both Dragon and the Ice Golem here cannot be provoked. So you're not getting that amount of value from his kit. Uh, so there we go. Greybeard puts out a million damage there, guys. Uh, you know, not bad. Pretty much in line with the damage put out by Iron Brago and Sill of the Drakes. So there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this guide. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.